All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. And today we're going to cover Chat GPT 101. Um, and I want to let you guys know that I really thought a lot about this subject. And I know that many of you are already utilizing Chat GPT. So I wanted this to be something that would help those that are brand new uh, and don't even have an account yet. And also hopefully help optimize some of you that are actually utilizing the tool, but maybe you want some clarity on how to gain better results. So a little bit about me, I am Heather Connor, um, and I am a realtor in Colorado, Crested Butte, Colorado, a little ski town. And I'm a dog mom, mountain enthusiast. Um, I jokingly call myself a recovering workaholic. Um, I still work a lot, but it's now more within areas that I'm passionate about. And that's something that, um, you know, in future talks, Dave and I will definitely talk about. Um, and then as well, just an advocate in general for us, not only just building our businesses and seeing success from the wealth side and from the professional side, but also living a good life. So, and then also the co-host of Good Life with my friend, David Matthews. So this webinar is for you if you are in one of these three camps. One, you're uncomfortable with implementing new technology. I know many of you on this webinar right now, and I know this isn't you, but for those of you that that is you, we're going to take you from step one to creating content at a high level. This is also for you if you're comfortable with technology, but you're just too busy and you don't have time for the newest quote unquote shiny object that is happening. And as we know in real estate, there are a lot of those. And then as well, this is for you if you are utilizing chat GPT, but as I previously mentioned, you're just not getting the results that you would prefer. So there's quite a few opportunities here, you guys. What we're going to do is we're going to go over some user-friendly techniques for those of you that don't love technology, I'm going to share why ChatGPT is not a shiny object, but a powerful tool that will create more efficiencies. And to me, this is really important, not just in your business life, but in your personal life as well. And then I'm also going to create, uh, share with you what I call my PAC method. This is a method that I coined. It's an acronym and I'll share with you what it stands for. And it came out of my personal frustration when I was learning how to use chat GPT. <laughs> so I have quite a few slides in here that have a lot of data and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, but I included these slides so that those of you that are really high fact finders like myself, you can watch this webinar and you could pause on these slides and you're welcome to geek out on this data. But for the purpose of this webinar, I'm going to move pretty fast through this. This is not important for you learning how to utilize this at a high level. This is just so many of you that may not be familiar can understand what ChatGBT truly is. So essentially, you guys have seen ChatGPT and OpenAI. OpenAI is the company. ChatGPT is the language model. And it's gaining rapid attention for its ability to assimilate data and create human-like responses to user prompts. Now, it's also the GPT stands for the following. It's generative, which creates new content based on patterns learned from existing data in its database. It's capable of generating text, speech, and even images. It's the P stands for pre-trained. So this model has been pre-trained by its developers. And that process allows the model to learn general language patterns and syntax, which is what allows it to create natural sounding responses. And then the T stands for transformer. This is the transformer language model, which was developed by Google back in 2017. So what is ChatGPT? It is a neural network. It's based on the function and structure of the human brain. Neural networks consist of interconnected nodes that process and transmit information, allowing it to learn from the data it receives. 
Now, remember, you guys, like I mentioned, I'm moving through this pretty fast. And if your eyes are crossing right now, it's OK. You don't have to memorize this. I'm just running through this so you have a higher level of understanding, should you care. Um, it's also deep learning. ChatGPT is a type of deep learning model, and it's capable of learning from large amounts of data. It's also a natural language processing. So NLP, which some of us know as Neural Linguistic Programming, um, don't confuse it for that acronym. NLP is also used meaning natural language processing, and it's specifically designed to process and generate human language. And then, of course, as we know, it's artificial intelligence. So here is our agenda today, you guys. We are going to run through some slides on how to create an account and then general guidelines. I'm going to share with you the three methods of utilization on how to gain results from ChatGPT. I'm going to share with you my pack method that I mentioned earlier. As we run through examples, I think that a lot of you will then realize there may be an ethical quandary that you think about, and we'll cover that. And then as well, last but not least, I'm going to share David and my gift with you guys. All right. So this is really simple. For those of you that do not have an account, I recorded a video where I walk you through this. It's really fast. But for those of you that would like that, just shoot me a message. Dave and I will get you the video. Really simple. So you will visit the website, which is the chat.openai.com forward slash auth forward slash login. That website will take you to this page. And it's really simple. You click on sign up. It will open up this little box. And there's three ways that you can create an account. Uh, the two below, which is continuing with your Google account or continue with Microsoft account are really simple and they'll auto log you in. The quote unquote most, uh, the one that takes the most time is the first one. And that's where you just create through an email address. And that's the the sign up process that I'll take you through in the video. And with this one, it just creates an extra step in which you'll need to open up your email that you register with and have to verify that email that they send you. So really straightforward. When you first log in to ChatGPT, it will open up this box that shares some basic things for you to know. Again, we can spend more time on this when we get into um, actually showing you live prompts. Um, so ChatGPT shares a couple examples with you, like explain quantum computing in simple terms. Got any creative ideas for a 10 year old's birthday? These are great for simple prompts, but what I'm going to show you in this webinar is actually how to accelerate your learning curve so that we're moving beyond prompts that are this simple and giving you generic results. And actually, like I mentioned, accelerate you into gaining really optimized results. So we'll dive into that further. The capabilities. Uh, ChatGPT can remember what you said earlier in the conversation. Um, it will allow you to provide follow-up corrections. And it's also decline, it's also trained to decline inappropriate requests. Um, and there are some limitations. It may occasionally generate incorrect information. It, it may occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content. And it has limited knowledge of the world and events after 2021. Here's some of the limitations. I will not go into a deep dive on this, but the slides here. So you guys can open up this webinar and read these later, should you want to. So let's jump into the three methods of utilization. Um, these are the three ways that I've really identified as the best ways to utilize ChatGPT. So one is really basic, and that's when you input a prompt. It gives you an answer, and then you copy and paste that. Pretty straightforward. I found that that is a great resource for when you're creating outlines. An example of that would be, um, how do I create a business plan? And it is spits out an outline, you copy and paste that, print it, and you use that as a guide to create a business plan. So it's, it's really good for utilizing basic outlines. Another method of utilization would be what I call the copy, paste, and adjust. This is when you create a prompt 
and ChatGPT um, gives spits back feedback. And then from there, you realize it's really not quite what you were looking for. And so you ask follow-up questions. So you adjust the question you're asking ChatGPT so that it can adjust the response that it's giving you. This is something that's great for blogs. Now, I say that this method is great for online blogs. And when you guys learn what the pack method is, you're going to question why I wouldn't say the PAC method is great for online blogs. And I'm going to share that with you later. And then last is the PAC method. And this is something, a great example of this would be if you're building an ebook. So the three ways of utilizing, um, I just went over this. One is the copy and paste. And this is great for something super straightforward and simple like an outline copy, paste, and adjust. This is the reason why I think this is the best outline for online blogs. If you're working on keyword optimization, and Heather Robbins, you know, you and I have been discussing this. If you utilize PAC, which I'm going to discuss what PAC means, while it may be a great, it, it'll create great content for your audience. However, something that you guys need to be aware of is Google may flag it. And what I mean by that is it can recognize, and I can't test to what degree or what percentage it can recognize. That could be a good topic for a future talk, but it may recognize that that content was created by AI and it can flag it. And if it does, then it may not give you credit for those keywords that are in the blog. Um, so just something to note and why I'm not recommending the pack method and the copy and paste and the adjust so that you can actually adjust the content yourself and put your own unique content in there to work around being flagged. Um, and then chat GPT can also learn your style, voice, and tone, but it can't actually intertwine your personal experiences from the past. So this is why I love using this as a great jumping start, but then you really personalize it as well with past experiences to make it more personal. And then the PAC method, which this acronym stands for, the P is prompt, the A is adjust prompt, and then the C is clarify in follow-up. I am going to share examples of this. Now, this is great if online keyword optimization is not required. It is excellent for outlining, creating, and finalizing documents such as ebooks, emails, video scripts, um, and other content like that. So here's the pack method, the prompt. This is the question and the set of instructions that you give to chat GPT. Pretty straightforward. Adjust prompt. This is when the output received from chat GPT does not meet your desired goal. So you type in the prompt again in a new conversation, that's an important piece, with minor verbiage adjustments. And then the C is clarify and follow up. This is where the output is close. Like chat GPT is on the path that you want it to be on with its response. However, it still needs tweaks, which are gained through follow-up instructions or questions. So this is just a quick little infographic here. And this is showing that when you utilize the PAC method for the content that I described before, that this is what will gain you the best results for items like keywords, video scripts. Um, you utilize the prompt, you adjust the prompt in a new conversation window, you clarify and follow up. And in general, your result, the more skilled you become in the PAC method, the higher quality of output and the less the number of revisions in your document that you will need later. All right, so I'm going to share um, a live time example of PAC with you guys to kind of clarify what I meant by all of that. Um, I just wanted you to have a good understanding when I reference PAC in live time, what I'm talking about. So let's talk about how ChatGPT can help in both real estate and personal life. It can help create property listing descriptions. It can create video scripts. 
It can create local area attraction blogs for websites and short scripts for social media. So like YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikToks. It can create a meal plan shopping list for the week. Um, it can write an apology letter to your spouse. And <laughs> I have a disclaimer. Um, there is this uh, book that I created for you guys. And I don't, I don't know if you can see me in the little window here, but um, there's a little disclaimer on that for those of you to keep you out of hot water, not get further in hot water if you do utilize it for an apology letter. All right, so let's try it. So this is um, where I am going to attempt to log into ChatGPT and run through some of these example prompts with you guys and show you in live time. There is a very high chance that this will fail because the one thing about the free version of ChatGPT is that when users are, when there's a lot of users on the platform, um, it can kind of shut down. It may not allow you immediate access. So I do have a backup plan if that happens, but cross your fingers, give me a moment here and let's see if I can share my screen in live time. While you do that, Heather, um, I just wanna jump on. For some reason we can't get uh, chat to work. So if you have any questions, just put them in the Q and A and then we'll uh, go through them, do them at the end. Okay, great, thanks, David. Whew. All right, guys, here we go. Cross your fingers that the technology gods are going to be on our um, on our side today. Okay. And David, can you just verify since folks aren't able to um, respond in chat right now. Can you verify that you can see my screen? Chat yep, GPT. We can see the whole thing. Okay, great. All right, I'm gonna refresh here because I had this open. And looks like it's going to cooperate today. All right, so let's work through a first example. And I want to share, I'm going to just share a ton of things with you guys. Um, and all of these examples I have outlined in the PDF that we created for you guys. Um, and so again, I'm going to move fast, but I just wanna show you the different ways you can utilize. So first I call this a style analysis prompt. And here's what it looks like. Um, essentially, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to analyze the style, voice, and tone of some content that I've created. Um, and the reason I am asking ChatGPT this is because I want it to recognize and essentially name my natural style, voice, and tone that I write in so that I know how to instruct it for future content. So that content sounds more like me. So here's what the prompt looks like. All right. Analyze the text below for style, voice, and tone. Utilizing natural language processing. And like I mentioned in that PDF, I give you guys all of these prompts verbatim. Oops. And create a prompt to write a new short form article in the same style, voice, and tone. Okay, and it's going to say you haven't given me anything yet. Okay, so AI is saying, I'm not able to analyze a text that you have not provided. So let's go ahead and grab a previous piece of work that I've created. And this is a perspective shift blog. Um, that I created in the past. So I'm just going to take all of that and copy it. And I'm pasting it right here. So this is the full document and I just pasted it. And then let's see what ChatGPT says.
Okay. So it's saying the style of text is informal and conversational, almost like a personal antidote. The language is simple and easy to understand with a lot of metaphors and analogies used to explain complex concepts. The author's voice is personal and relatable with a clear passion for skiing and an eagerness to share their experiences and lessons with the reader. The tone of this text is positive and encouraging. Prompt, all right. So write a short form article about the benefits of mindfulness meditation in a similar style voice and tone is provided. Text using metaphors and analogies to explain how mindfulness meditation you can see it's getting a little bit sideways because it's saying mindfulness net meditation. Um, and these are some things that you'll realize is that chat GPT, this is why we're learning prompts, is that sometimes it can be on, it can be pretty clear and on the same page as you with what it is trying to spit out for content. And then sometimes it sidebars a little bit. So the prompts and follow-ups that we utilize are to give you the best results to get what you're actually looking for. Okay, so the key words here are um, that, let's pull this out, informal, conversational. It also talks about personal and relatable. And then it says positive and encouraging. So going through this process right here, I have just trained ChatGPT that this is what I want it to write in the next um, in the next form. So let's try this. Um, I'm going to say, please write a short story using the same style, voice, and tone above, and use the example of me and learning, gosh, a lesson while being irritated and waiting in a long line for coffee <laughs> this morning. <laughs> okay. And here we go. So what happened here is I trained ChatGPT to write in my voice. And then if you're not clear about what you want it to do next, you'll see here, it still pulls in the ski racing analogy from my story. And this is something you're going to see. ChatGPT remembers approximately the last 4,000 words in your conversation. So each one of these little, um, you'll look over here where it says new chat, each one of these little conversations, it can remember the last 4,000 words in it. And so you're going to see some repetition. Even though I didn't ask it to talk about ski racing here, it still added it in. So let's see if we can ask it to remove that. And actually let's go ahead and review this just so you guys can see. So it says, this morning I found myself waiting in a long line for coffee and I could feel my irritation growing with each passing minute. I just wanted my caffeine fix and get on with my day. But the line seemed to be moving at a snail's pace. And as you read on, you can see this is pretty good, you guys. Like this took what I, my style, my voice, my tone, and then it also took the subject matter and I just spit this out in a minute of, in a matter of moments. So I'm just going to ask it to remove the ski racing. And normally it's pretty fast. And I will share that um, being on Zoom and screen sharing, and then also utilizing this, um, that my computer is slowing down the processing a little bit. It's actually a lot faster. Okay. So it's thinking carefully because it needs to remove all of the ski racing analogies, which it heavily was incorporating because that was a part of my original piece that I asked it to analyze in the beginning. 
Okay, so this morning I found myself standing in a long line for coffee, growing increasingly frustrated with each passing minute. So you can see here that it really did a good job and is rewriting it by removing that piece. Because for me, incorporating that storyline didn't make sense with waiting in line. Okay, so that is how you train chat GPT to create content in your style, your voice, and your tone. Now, what we're going to do is move into how can chat GPT, I'm gonna let this complete and I'm gonna open a new conversation box when it's done. Um, but the next thing that I'm going to show you guys is how you can create short form video scripts. So this would be great for YouTube shorts, TikTok, um, Instagram reels. As a lot of us know, those are 60 second reels, maybe 90 seconds, um, and some are a little bit longer, just depending. So I naturally speak at a rate of about 200 words per minute. So a 60 second reel would be approximately 200 words or less. And so what I'm going to instruct ChatGPT to do is to write a video script for me. So let's open up a new chat. This is really important. Every chat is a conversation. And if I were to ask ChatGPT to write me a video script within the same conversation, it would start to mix in what it just asked me to do here with the new prompts and you'll start to get muddled results. So let's open up a new chat box and you'll see here, hang tight, we're experiencing high demand but it seems to be cooperating still. All right, so here's the prompt right here. Explain as if you were explaining to a sixth grader what it means to buy down an interest rate in real estate terms. You'll see I'm being extra clear because sometimes Certain languages are used in multiple professions. So you want to be incredibly clear. In 200 words or less, this is because my rate of speech is approximately 200 words per minute. So this will spit out a script that's about 60 seconds. Be simple, clear, personal, and include a good, simple example. So what I did here is I pulled some key words from my tone of voice that ChatGPT had already um, identified earlier because I am going to implement a little bit of my style, voice, and tone into here. But you'll see that I didn't include words like motivational and, and encouraging because those aspects don't make sense to me for this factual reel, but I did include simple, clear, and personal. So explain as if you were explaining to a sixth grader what it means to buy down an interest rate in real estate terms in 200 words or less. Be simple, clear, personal, and include a good, simple example. Okay, so you can see that because I was very clear um, about my instructions, it is creating exactly what I'm looking for. And I have used this prompt before multiple times, which is why I know it works really well. And all I do is honestly, I reuse this exact prompt over and over and over again. So a great way to optimize this, if you guys are looking for content uh, for your, your social media and for short form videos, or even for, um, for assets that you can use as a video bank for clients, um, a great way to optimize this would be to log into ChatGPT and ask it for the top 100 real estate terms. And it will spit out a list. From there, 
what I would then do is use this exact exact prompt that I just shared. And the only thing I would change is where I wrote buy down interest rate. I would just copy and paste one of those other hundred terms in there. And then it will spit out a script for each one of those. And then as you can tell, this makes it so simple for you to have a, a hundred scripts instantly. So you can just flip on your camera and start recording. Um, so for those of you that struggle with turning on the camera and understanding what to say and you freeze, I freeze in front of the camera. And so I personally have to use a teleprompter. This makes it really really simple for me. So as you guys can see, this is great. It's actually pretty spot on. When you buy a house, you might need to borrow money from a bank to pay for it, but the bank will charge you extra money called interest for the loan. This interest can make the total amount of money you pay for the house much more expensive and so forth. So something I also want to highlight here before we move on to the next prompt is I wrote in here as if you were explaining to a sixth grader, and this is really important. A lot of times we are so good at our jobs that we speak in a language that our clients don't understand. And so we sound great. We sound professional and they know that we know what we're talking about. But if we can't explain it in a manner that makes sense to them, then we're not helping them. And we're not helping ourselves because people won't create, people won't watch content that they don't understand and it doesn't help them. So this is a really good way for you to learn how to clarify and speak in a way that really speaks to your clients. So go ahead and as I continue on to the next prompt, go ahead and just throw messages in q and Is If there's something that you would really love to see me um, utilize as a prompt and work through as an example with all of you guys in live time, but I'm going to continue moving forward with some other ones. Okay. Um, all right. Here's a good one, you guys. So new chat again, because we've already trained that last chat to speak in a certain way. So let's open a new chat and let's go into the listing description prompt. All right, here we go. Write a real estate listing description for a new home. sale in Point Loma, San Diego. It is a four bedroom, two bath home with an attached. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to throw in facts that I know about the home. Both the ocean and the bay. The home is more traditional. It was built in 1952. And this is actually a fun one. And we're going to cover a couple of things here, including potential ethical violations that happen when you use ChatGPT here. And uh, this will probably show up when we run through this example. And I'm asking right in a simple, clear, personal, Man. All right, here we go. Okay. So as this is spitting this out, where 
I love ChatGPT. There's positive, ne positives and negatives when you utilize ChatGPT for listing descriptions. And you guys will see this start to come, the, the negatives start to pop up that you need to be aware of when I um, create a further adjustment after this is finished with its current content. Um, but right now you can see it's doing a great job. So welcome to your new dream home in Point Loma, San Diego. This beautiful traditional home built in 1952 has been updated and is ready for you to move in. What is great about this is that, honestly, you guys, we have so much happening in our day that sometimes sitting down and all of a sudden having to move from operator mode and managing contracts and clients and getting things done to all of a sudden moving into a creative mode in our brain, that can be really challenging. So what I love about ChatGPT is that we can come into this program, spit out the details, give it instructions, and it will start to create content in a more descriptive form for us. So while I believe that it's challenging to get a copy and paste version of a listing description from this, I believe it can greatly minimize the potential stress of having to switch from um, being in operator mode to moving into creative mode. So that's something that I think is really good here. Now, it's going to wrap up this content pretty soon. And you'll see here that it took um, the multiple sentences that I have above, and it expanded it into probably about four paragraphs here. So it just basically fleshed out what I already said. When you skim through this, um, you'll see it added a few extra things here. Uh, with a fenced in yard, your furry friends will have plenty of room to run around and play. This could be in a community that doesn't allow pets, you know. Um, so we have to be careful of when it adds additional details. Now, this is where you're really going to see what I'm talking about as far as be careful of some of the potential fallbacks. This is pretty straightforward. But now what I'm going to do is um, continue the conversation with ChatGPT. And I'm going to say, okay, this is great. Can you make the description twice as long and add some nice descriptive verbiage? So I'm asking for it to get a little bit more creative here and add a few more words that might evoke a little bit more um, description and feeling about the home. Okay, so here are updated results. And we'll see, I have utilized this feature uh, multiple times and <laughs> We will see if it's going to make some of the same um, violation errors that it's been that it has made in past content for me. So I can show it to you guys. Okay, so let me see here. I'm not actually seeing some of them in this version. So I'll share with you what I have seen in the past so you can keep an eye out for it. Okay, and this one's actually pretty good. So I'll share that um, something. This one's actually pretty good, you guys. All right, so something that I can share with you is one, of course, chat GPT can add features to the home that may not exist. Um, I had one where I didn't say anything about a fireplace, but it added um, this, this comment about cozying up in front of the fireplace. And I was like, I never said that. ChatGPT just added that. Um, another thing that you want to be mindful of, and I'm not seeing it right off the 
that here in this version, um, but it was talking about the master bedroom and master bathroom. For us, we can't say master. We're supposed to say main or primary. So you want to be careful of uh, keyword violations. Um, you know, you want to be careful of, you know, obviously like saying, oh, this is perfect for families, things like that. So these are things that ChatGPT doesn't know. Um, and so you want to be careful about just copying and pasting and utilizing because it may add features that don't exist. And then it may add keywords that are in violation of your ethical rules with um, your MLS, Dora, you know, all the powers that be. Now, what's also funny in this example is that it didn't do this and probably because I'm going live in front of you guys, but it has done this to me in the past. Chat GPT can be quite verbose. So what I mean by that is that sometimes when you ask it to really offer descriptive words about your properties, it can get pretty encouraging and use really big words and constantly talk about how great it is. Um, and I would definitely go back and tone those down. It's kind of like when somebody writes an email to you in all caps, it's just, it's just too much. And so that's something to be aware of. Um, but I think ChatGPT knew I was going to point that out. And so it didn't do this in this example. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Um, so we have so many different things that we can cover in that PDF that I sent you guys. Um, I actually show you the exact three-step strategy on how to create an ebook. Um, and when you follow that strategy, it makes it really simple and gives you really good results. I'm not going to do that here for the sake of time um, because it is 846. So um, but what I do want to share as the last prompt, and then we'll be finished here with the examples, is um, a great way to utilize this in your personal life. Because something that I'm really passionate about and David's really passionate about, and this is why we align so well on these aspects in good life, is that life isn't just about running a good business. It's about living a good life as well. So let's give you one solid example about how ChatGPT can help you in your personal life. All right, so here's something fun. Let's talk about meal planning. Um, so let's give an example prompt to ChatGPT. Um, can you help me create a meal plan that is based on seafood and is keto friendly. So I'm just being super specific. I'd like to share a sad side note that Cheetos are not keto friendly. And apparently I'm not keto friendly either, I've learned. Okay. Okay. So right here, step one. It's going to give you a general overview of different meal plans um that are based off the criteria we just asked so this is great right okay that's nice and we'll let it finish populating the remaining days okay so this is good but it doesn't necessarily um you know solve any major life problems as far as helping you gain more time in your life. This is just like a list of recipes. You can get this anywhere. So here's what's next. My next prompt that I would ask is, can you create a shopping list for me for the above meal plans for two adults? Okay, so now we have a meal plan that it suggested, and now we have a shopping list. You can just print this out and either create a delivery to your home or obviously go shopping. Now, 
it has done this for me before. Let's see if it'll do this for us today on the call. Um, can you update the shopping list? So it is still for two adults. However, include the approximate amount of each ingredient of each item I should get. Okay, let's see if it will follow this prompt. It has before. Okay, so as you can tell, this is obviously a lot more helpful for us because if you just go out, so number one, meal plan is great because it gives you ideas. And sometimes we just need ideas in our life, especially when we're juggling multiple things. So having a clear list of meals you can make is great. Next is having a shopping list is great. But what's even better is when they tell you, here's exactly what you should get so that you should have close to what you need to implement this weekly menu that we just suggested for you. Um, and I clearly state it's for two adults. And then there's one more piece of this I'm going to share, and then that will be the end of the prompts for now. Um, but there's just one more piece I wanna share with you guys that makes this really fun. Okay, it's still going. <laughs> Thanks for being patient, you guys, and letting this uh, populate. <laughs> and I will share that when you are utilizing these prompts yourself, it actually goes a lot faster than this. It's already pretty Fast, but it goes a lot faster when you're not on Zoom and screen sharing. Okay, last piece. Here's what's really fun. Let's now take one of these recipes that asked it offered us, and we say crab cakes with a side salad and mixed greens of cucumber sounds amazing. So I'm going to copy that, paste it right here, and here's my prompt. Please. Give me the recipe for So now it's going to not only share with me the items from that shopping list that I purchased, um, it's going to obviously give me the amounts and then the instructions. So you can see here that if you understand the process of how to utilize this for your personal life, this does save you time. Now a shopping list in and of itself, it doesn't. A shopping list without how much you should actually pick up at the store so you can successfully create those recipes for a week, that's not that helpful. But if you understand the prompts, this is how it saves you time so that you can get in, get out, and then start spending time on things that actually really matter in your life. So, okay. I am done with the live prompt version. Um, David, really quickly, while I move to back to my presentation screen, is there anything that popped up as far as questions that I need to address right now? Uh, no questions. Uh, Nicole said that your shopping list looked delicious. <laughs> and Heather Connor, or uh, excuse me, Heather Robbins said that you did great and she loved your intel. So Perfect. we're good. Um, I um, am excited to write an apology letter to my spouse. I'm um, see what they see what chat GBT says about me. Oh. <laughs> okay, you guys, if you choose to utilize chat GPT for an apology letter, read uh, the PDF that we're sending you because there's some strong disclaimers in there so that you um, don't use chat GPT, chat GPT for an apology letter and then end up in further hot water. <laughs> read the disclaimers. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm go gonna ahead. have it write one for me today where I'm gonna the prompt is gonna be write an apology letter 
where I really don't think I'm wrong, but I'm saying sorry just to say sorry and see what it comes up with. Well, that sounds like you. Mm -hmm. Yep, right on. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the presentation. And I know that we're running, uh, we're coming to the end of time here, guys. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, and let's go ahead and find out <laughs> where my presentation went. Okay, continue to bear with me. as um, things like to hide from me, which my presentation is not doing, so bear with me. Okay. All right, so. This then brings us to our ethical quandary, which I thought as we're looking through some of the content and it's writing content for us, and as we're claiming authorship of that content, um, some of you may be thinking, well, then this isn't all of my content and I didn't author all of this. So what's the ethical and legal boundaries around this? And the answer that I have for you isn't a real answer right now, because right now things are moving so fast that there's not a super clear answer on this. Um, but here is ChatGPT's legal position on the use of their content. And I pulled this from their FAQs on their site. So their position is that subject to the content policy and terms, you own the output you create with ChatGPT, including the right to reprint sell and merchandise, regardless of whether the output was generated through a free or paid plan. So we have some resources for you guys. A couple of things here. I did not mention it on um, this webinar, but there's this little sheet called a brain dump. Pretty straightforward there. Um, this is a great sheet of paper to carry around with you um, as you live your day-to-day -day life. And as you have things that just you think about and you're like, oh crap, I can't, I can't forget that. Or I need to remember that. Just write it down on here. And then what I love about this is you can just take this sheet. And when you're sitting in front of chat GPT, use that as an idea generator of really creative ways that you can utilize chat GPT. Um, and then as well, a lot of the prompt examples um, and even more that are both personal and work-related I run you step-by-step step through those as well as follow-up and even show you the output that ChatGPT gives you um, in this PDF, the ChatGPT 101. So David and I um, will share these resources with you after this webinar. And of course, if for any reason there's technology hiccups, because if I'm involved, there might be a technology hiccup and then David fixes it. But it usually, it, I believe, initiates because of me. I have some magical force field. Um, then just shoot me a text or David a text, and we'll make be sure to get you guys these resources. So if you have any questions, um, go ahead and reach out. Thanks so much for being here today, you guys.